say I'd be back. At least I think that's what happened. The truth is, by then I was beginning to feel very sleepy indeed. I remember flying over Niagara Falls with Lake Erie and Lake Toronto, stretched out on either side, but I must have fallen asleep because I can't remember any more of the journey. Meanwhile, Father Christmas must have carried on his deliveries, visiting Vermont and New Hampshire and Maine before crossing the Canadian border to New Brunswick, looping back via Prince Edward Island and Newfoundland, sweeping up to Quebec with Ontario and zigzagging west to, Nubit, to the West, Northwest Territories to Alberta, then daisy chaining through British Columbia and the Yukon to mop up Alaska. And then, having finished all the North American deliveries, he must have swooped across the globe to return to my house to drop me off. But really, I'm just guessing. Because the only thing I remember was waking up in my fireplace, covered in suit. I felt something moving underneath me, and it was a few seconds before I realised it was Father Christmas. Despite being only half my weight, he had somehow managed to carry me from the sleigh to the chimney pot, and so now I was face down in the cold ashes. Suddenly, wide awake, I jumped up and helped him with his feet. Are you alright? I asked with concern. I think I've twisted my ankle again, he said. It's only just started feeling better. Here, take a seat, I said. Is there any brandy? he asked hopefully. Mm, I think he had drank it all before we left, I said. But don't worry, I'll fetch you another bag of frozen peas. What do you do? he said. When I returned from the kitchen, he had a grave look on his face. Look. I'm sorry about this, he said, but I'm going to need one last bit of help. These are for you and your sisters, he said, handing me a sack of presents. I'd be delighted, I replied, sweeping the bag up onto my shoulders. And Jackson? Yes, he said. Thank you. I smiled. I somehow knew that when I came downstairs, he wouldn't be there, and that this was us saying goodbye. Merry Christmas, Jackson, he said. Merry Christmas, Father Christmas, I replied. That night I delivered millions of presents, but Father Christmas had always been with me. Now, as I climbed the stairs with a well thin sack on my hands, I really felt the pressure. My sisters were dependent on me, and I mustn't let them down. Hardly daring to breathe, I crept into their room. There, at the end of their bed, were their empty stockings. I couldn't really see in the dark, so I just trusted the sack to hand me the right presents. I knew if I made a sound, any sound at all, my sister would wake up and see me, and then I'd never believe in Father Christmas ever again. Once I was done, I crept silently down the hall and placed Father Christmas' sack at the bottom of my bed. He and I delivered presents to all the children in the world, except one. Whatever I'd left, I reasoned to myself, must be meant for me. So it was a little surprise when I woke the next morning and delved into the bottom of the sack. Most years I got some of the things on my list, but this year, well, I've got every single thing I wanted. Even the exact Star Wars Han Solo action figure I'd asked for. There was a present I had not asked for too, but all was secretly wanted. A telescope for looking at the stars. That's the really cool thing about Father Christmas. He knows you better than you know yourselves. My sister had a great Christmas too, as well as the Dunlop set and the Nerf guns they had both asked for. They were the two most beautiful dolls to begin with. Neither of them knew what they were. But I was able to explain and to do some great big big brother work by showing how each one came apart in the middle and inside was each other, was another slightly smaller doll and how you could set them out so you had the whole row that's a bit like people inside us inside us is every person we've ever been every even from when we were very small they loved the dolls so much. At one point, I was nearly told to my sisters it was me who laid the presents out, not Father Christmas. And then I remembered what he taught me. When you give something and you don't tell anyone, the good feeling stays with you forever. So I stayed quiet. I felt so bad for tricking my mother and father the night before that when they came downstairs, the first thing I did was give them both a big hug, even though I don't usually like that kind of thing because it made, makes my skin itch. Once my sister had shown them the presents, which by that point were mostly broken, I saw them go over to check the tray we'd left for Father Christmas by the fire. Look, Jackson, the mince pie's gone, said my mother. And the brandy, said my father. Sure enough, there were crumbs from the mince pie, an empty brandy glass, and a missing carrot. 
I didn't tell them about my adventure with Father Christmas because I wasn't sure that they'd believe me. But looking at the evidence, I knew it had to be true. The end. I hope you enjoyed the story. Keep an eye out for another one.